Okay, getting underway, engine start up. One, disable shore power. Two, remove the shore power cord. Next, turn on all your uh, underway electrical breakers. It's the, the bottom four, flybridge, radar, autopilot, Raymarine MFD. Bait, windshield wipers, also the, uh, it was the bait tank, it's now the wash down. And then horn lighter, fresh water pump is on, bilge off, this is a spare. Inverter, I, I only turn this on when needed. The inverter powers potentially the outlet under the helm chair as discussed previously. And then it is directly wired to this duplex outlet on the port side next to the stove. This is the house power selector. Number two is the house bank. Number one is the engine start. I always run it on house. You can switch this while the engine's running and underway. It uh, is not in the path of the alternator. This is your computer for the house battery bank. This is your voltmeter for AC power. Here's your AC breakers. When we're on shore power and the boat's unattended, I leave everything on except for the hot water heater is off and all of the DC breakers can be off when unattended. Okay, next open the raw water intake seacock. You can access that through the, the forward hatch. It's on the starboard side of midships. Basically thread your arm and head in to the side of the engine and reach in there and open the valve. You don't have to remove the the table and access it from overhead. Okay, next I always just test the uh, transmission and engine controls. Uh, and actually I'm feeling resistance and that is because I need to first free up the canvas and the flying bridge so that the controls are not restricted. There we go. Now, now they're free without restriction. Test accelerator as well all good so i cracked the accelerator just a little bit turn on the key press the start button and i'm not going to do that right now because i haven't opened the seacock and normally while the engine's warming up i start booting up electronics at the mfd lower vhf and run this on 13 or 14. And then run the upper VHF on 16. The uh, standard horizon radio is running on the big antenna, the 9 dB. And this is on a, an older eight foot. So this is starboard side antenna. And this radio is the tall port side. Here's your uh, comms for the flying bridge. So next I typically walk aft and make sure we're moving a proper amount of raw water and the exhaust looks good. You know, the kind of expected amount of smoke and oil sheen. This switch when pulled out is engaged and it enables the ACR automatic current relay. The, the switch that combines the house and Start banks, the alternator is wired direct to the house bank. So if you want to top off the engine start batteries, you have to pull this out. And then that ACR only engages if the voltage is above, I think it's 13 volts. Uh, so normally this is closed. I only do that if I'm uh, out and underway for several days, I'll top off the engine start. Uh, running lights are here. All three port starboard and then the, the white forward and aft end lights are all old school incandescents. The, the stern light has been a little bit temperamental. You may have to go uh, just tap on it to get it to fire up. Let's go look. Well, today it's cooperating, it's on, but sometimes it just needs a little encouragement. Anchor light on the mast is an LED unit. And the uh, spreader lights, as you, 
everyone's aware the port side is installed on the spreader the starboard uh, needs to be wired up the the starboard spreader light is in the flybridge seat on the port side in a new box that's led as well as uh there's one more led light what is it oh the deck lights deck lights on the house are led Okay, head pump is the macerator to pump overboard before you turn the switch on down in the engine room uh, just to the starboard of the Raycor filters are the valves. There's two hose bib style valves. The lower one is for overboard that needs to be opened. And then in the hose line running to the through hall, there is a PVC valve that you need to open as well so make sure both obviously are open before you pressurize the the line and then you just let that run um until the tank's empty the fastest way to open and close the main engine seacock is from the seated position you thread your arm in and reach down and just open the valve you can see it's closed right now and then in the engine start battery bank is um Water to top off the batteries. This is the, uh, what's it called? What's the water called for batteries? Distilled. distilled water. And and then in the aft, is there more distilled in yeah, the aft cabin? Yeah. Under the television in the aft cabin, there's a gallon or two of distilled water. And drinking water. So the control panel for the generator. When the seacock is closed, I remove the key. So it's closed right now. The seacock intake for the gen set is under the aft head toilet um, and you can lift there's a little hole but it's hard to get a good angle with your hand to open it it's easier to lift the floorboard that the head's bolted to to get a, to get the valve open and then i frequently forget but preheat is counterclockwise i give that 15 20 seconds to preheat and then you crank in the other direction you have to hold this um Gotta hold this button in to get the engine to catch when you're starting. And then you gotta hold it until the engine comes up to speed. That's the uh, low oil pressure, over temp, cutoff safety mechanism, and your hour meter. A couple of multifunction display notes. I've been running the dual chart radar when underway. And uh, let's see, transmit. And I've got the overlay enabled. You can certainly play with all of that in the menus. And I've got the zoom linked so the scales are consistent on both charts. But obviously that's all adjustable. It's set to heading up right now. It's easy to switch to course up. That's in the menu. Uh, autopilot. The primary uh, control head for the autopilot is in the flying bridge. That's super intuitive. You spin the dial to select the desired heading. And there's two buttons at the bottom. The right hand one is engage left is disengage. When you're at the lower helm, to access the autopilot, you press the button here and you go to pilot controls and you click auto and it'll run in the heading mode of the current course. I don't know if it'll let me engage while we're underway here. I don't want it to hard over and keep pumping. So you can just do course corrections one degree at a time get it straight ahead so it's happy okay and then um so if you need to take over manual control again in an absolute emergency you gotta avoid a log or something in the water you can just spin the wheel you're gonna be fighting the autopilot but uh if you gotta take up ev evasive action quickly you still have helm control it's just gonna be chasing to counteract what you're doing and then you come over here and you press standby and yes i want to go into standby so now you're back to manual controls and then uh, you can also navigate to a waypoint, which is, hold on, I gotta turn the light off. You can also set up a course uh, and navigate to multiple waypoints or simply go to a single waypoint. Uh, to do that, you go to, uh, let's see, menu. Oh, sorry, I gotta get over to the chart plotter side. Menu, navigate. And then uh, yeah, go to the waypoint, go to cursor, go to waypoint. I've got a bunch of, let's go SoCal Coast. 
and like let's say Newport Beach which is 16 nautical miles from here and I believe that's just a waypoint offshore so I'll ask yeah do you want to track yes I found that this thing sometimes panics if you're not already on a heading within about 15 20 degrees of the waypoint it'll sometimes panic and, and error out so I tend to get underway on a course heading in autopilot and then switch over to track mode Now, occasionally when you boot out up all the electronics the radar will not connect and restarting the MFD doesn't necessarily find the radar so I found what's best when you run into that anomaly is power down the MFD and then cycle the two breakers power off radar and MFD focus power off radar power off MFD wait about a minute power them both back up and then I wait a little bit before I reboot the MFD. I think the radar needs to come up and boot before the MFD. If the MFD comes up prior to the radar, it may not connect. That's my theory, but uh, I've had that happen numerous times. Seems to be more likely to do that when the boat's been sitting for a while. 